Major, major move. We going all in. Like we got nothing to lose. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves. Welcome back to my channel. I want to thank you guys for actively deciding to spend time with me. I'm just a guy in a Spider-Man mask, a cool one I might add. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just providing information and content already on the internet. And I just read it and present it to you guys in a way that may reach you or may not reach you. Whatever the reason is you found my page, I'm grateful you're here. And thank you for spending time with me. Let's get into this. What is up everybody? I'm Mr. Man. Welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you guys coming through, enjoying the content that I drop because uh, I drop fire content and it's like up to date, it's current and it's from back in the past as well. It'll take you back in time and bring you right up to speed with what's going on. And let me tell you, there is a lot going on. So. One of the recent things I have had um, re had just noticed, actually, pause before that. We're going to be talking about liquidity today, okay? But now that we have that established, let's go forward now. So I had noticed that the steering committee they had updated their uh, roster now. It used to be um, Class Knot, who was the man in charge for the steering committee for the FSB. And I look on the webpage now, and it's a different guy. It's Riozo Him Himino. He's the chair of SCSI, uh, Deputy Governor of Japan. So now Japan has taken this seat here. But don't forget, we have Michael Barr over there. We have Gerber Gensler over there. We have Nelly, Nelly Liang over here. We have Tobias Adrian from the IMF, the World Bank over there. We have the OECD over there. Where I'm going with this is down here. The CPMI, Committee on, and Payments, Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure. Okay? And there we have John Cunliffe as the individual chair on that. The CPMI is a very, very, very important piece of this puzzle. Them and IOSCO. So the CPMI, who are their members? This is on the BIS website. All right, I'll show you guys here. This is the BIS website, and hopefully you can see that. And here are their members. All right, their member countries. These are the countries that are all the experiments going on right now. All of them, all of them, especially Singapore. You have Canada doing some, Indonesia doing some, Bank of India. Hong Kong Monetary Authority, the HKMA, there's Deutsche Bank up there, Bank of France. These are the people where the, the banks, where the experiments are happening and where the infrastructure is being set up, right? Federal Reserve, Bank of New York, they're the ones rolling out the stable coin or who are regulated in terms of stable coins. They had come out and openly said this. Their stable coin regulations have already been passed out in New York because they're the ones running that experiment. So as we go on, here, stable coins used by a systemically important SA for money settlements should have little or no credit or liquidity risk. They should not have credit or liquidity risk. In assessing the risk presented by the stable coin, the SA should consider whether the stable coin provider or provides its holders with a direct claim, a legal claim on the issuer and or claim on title to or interest in the underlying reserve assets for timely convertibility at par into other liquid assets such as claim on a central bank. All right, the claim on the central bank. So that stable coin here, the wholesale stable coin, stable coin the global systemic um, stable coin arrangement at that point, the uh, narrow banking stable coin, global, uh, global, Stable coin, whatever you want to call it, it's all the same damn thing here. But that stable coin, claim on the bank, this is issued by a private company here, such as Ripple, such as Stellar. How the arrangement looks, I'm not sure the kind of rails they're going to use to set this up, but how the arrangement looks. You have the stable coin here, which is XRP, stable coin here, which is XLM on the retail side. We're talking wholesale side here. The claim is on the whole the central bank. In other words, the, 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 the stable coin will have its own 
reserves, which has which is reserves in the central bank at that point. So that private company can issue these stable coins, if that makes sense. If not, please write what please uh, have some questions down the, down in the uh, comments there, and I can explain it further. Um, where am I? Reserve assets, uh, liquid assets, central bank, and a clear and robust process for fulfilling holders' claims on both normal and stress times. And we're going through a stress time now. Nothing normal about this. When seeking to observe principles, uh, a systemically important essay, which would be the company issuing that stable coin at that point, should determine whether the credit and liquidity risk of the stable coin that is issued for money uh, settlements are minimized and strictly controlled and the stable coin is an acceptable alternative to the use of central bank money. Central bank money at that point will be a CBDC. CBDCs are tokenized deposits. A tokenized deposit is literally just you going into a bank machine and you getting your cash, your cash in hand, putting it into the bank machine. You've now deposited that that fiat dollar, paper dollar. It's now tokenized. It's now a tokenized deposit. That's essentially what it is, okay? So, continuing on here. Now that we know that, where do I wanna go here? Where do I wanna go here? Where do I wanna go here? Here we are, this is from uh, the Bank Banker Cash Management Guide from 2018. This is page eight, let me see if I can pull up. If I can see this mouse, this is the title right here, Cash Management from Deutsche Bank, okay? Notice how you got that? Checkmate, checkmate. And in here, what are we talking about? Bringing market infrastructure up to speed, ISO 20022, all right? And what do we have in this bringing markets up to speed? From 2018. So, for example, DLT based Global Payment Challenger Ripple claims that many of its more than 100 financial institution RippleNet members are already in production with solutions. For example, SEB has processed more than 1 billion in payments over RippleNet between Sweden and the US. Ripple experienced a banner year in 2017 in terms of customers going live. Okay, remember this, okay? says Ashish Spurla, a senior vice president for product management at Ripple. He predicts even greater take up this year, this year being 2018. All right, and I'll show you this. When it went live, when Ripple Net went live, they're saying, okay, 2017, 2018. And 2018 has started strong. In April, in April, Santander launched um, one pay affects a real-time remittance service based on Ripple's X current product, which allows the banks to what? Retail customers in the UK. Uh, that's not it. How do you do this here? Which allows the banks. That doesn't make sense. Re okay, whatever. Retail customers in the UK, Spain, Poland, and Brazil to send Euro and US dollar payments across the four countries. There, that's right. Santander UK customers can access this service via a smartphone app with international payment reaching their destination in one day versus three to five days on average for traditional wire transfers. So, that being said, let's check out in April, they said, all right, in May what had happened in may let's just check it out in may on may 18th xrp sorry may 9th 2018 xrp was sitting at a dollar 50 a buck 50. you hear what i'm saying it didn't just didn't just be it wasn't just introduced at that price it had run up to that price when after santander and their customers as they said went live in april and now in May, it shot up in 2018. That's not long ago, all right? So this is what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for this to happen again. Because I believe this will happen again. This belief isn't confounded in nothing. This, this is a belief based on the past proves the present. All right? And it happened again. It happened again. Look at this. Look at that buildup. 
happened again up to a dollar ninety seven ish just under two bucks at that point and now we're sitting around 50 60 cents so i personally am thankful to have this opportunity to be able to buy more and trade it because i'm learning to trade also i like to, I, I like to trade xrp i like how it moves like it's smooth 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 let's go back okay so where were we? we had done that we had done that we looked over this right here this is page what eight okay let's just do this this here is a cross-border payments and cooperative uh, oversight from the central banks okay central banking may 18th 2021 by class m lober i can't i'm not gonna i tried just destroyed that name all right overview of application for cross-border payment framework framework they're talking about framework here for cross-border payments. Key risk associated with innovative cross-border payment solution implication for legal and regulatory framework. Right? So they're talking about all that. And who? Who do they talk about in here? Who do you think they talk about in here? Okay, for cross-border settlements. Here, cross-border payments. Here in A, here's the old setup and arrangement that they had. Here is the newness to the markets. This is the new way that they are doing it newness to the market so new forms of cross-border and cross-currency settlement entry of new players and reaction of incumbents fintech payment service providers reinventing remittance you have transfer wise transfer wise and revolut alternative connectivity services would be ripple connect response by swift with gpi uh, use of crypto assets as a bridge currency. We have Ripple liquidity alternatives based on DLT CLS net. Ripple liquidity is the alternative there, okay? Settlement assets as proxy for CBDC. Digital token denomination in major sovereign currencies to improve wholesale. It settles in sovereign currencies in wholesale. So that's what these global stable coins do. Funds held at the central bank of issue, okay? Like I was trying to explain earlier, the stablecoin and the CBDC, the reserve of the reserves for the stablecoin are held in the central bank. That's how that works. And here we are at a bridge dig digital assets seamlessly, okay? Bridge traditional fiat systems with the new world of crypto. There we go. Here we go. Benefits of a liquidity hub. What, what's the issue they're trying to solve? What's the issue we're living through right now? Liquidity. Liquidity. Let us do this. Crypto is here. It's no longer an idea or on the horizon. It's already the reality of how businesses and people trade, move, and manage value. Not that one. But despite a growing desire by businesses to engage in crypto, integrating digital asset solutions is complex. It often requires cumbersome integrations, it has high costs, it involves engaging with fragmented, slow, and costly fiat payout landscape. At Ripple, we built Liquidity Hub to seamlessly bridge the new world of digital assets with the traditional world of fiat. The experience is plug and play, encompassing a single API connection into a breadth of liquidity pools. It offers optimized pricing via smart order routing and through Ripple's suite of products, best in class last mile fiat payouts into global jurisdictions will be available. Liquidity Hub powers interoperability between crypto and fiat systems, bridging digital assets seamlessly. Partner with Ripple for your crypto liquidity needs today. So, that being said, am I a fan of fiat? Absolutely not, because I understand and know what it is now. Am I a fan of Ripple? Absolutely, because I understand that fiat's not going away. Have I sold my soul, as some people say? No, I have not sold my soul. I just understand in this world that we live in that uh, other other 
platforms or other cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin are not going to be the one that's used or be what's used. Not the one, there's going to be multiple, it's going to be a web of things, but it's not going to be what's used in terms of moving the money, in terms of moving large quantities of money. Bitcoin is an, is, is an intrinsic thing, it gives you intrinsic value, it's not a store of value. It doesn't store any value. It doesn't tokenize anything. So if you can't tokenize anything, you're not storing a value on that chain at all. You have to have third party individuals create other dApps, which is a dApp, um, and to utilize layer twos, layer threes, layer fours on top of these things so it can even be used. Whereas Ripple offers an all in one product on the XRPL. And XRP is the crypto asset that facilitates this. Is that everything I want to show you guys? I want to make sure before I let you go. I want to give you guys the full experience here. I do believe that is everything. Um, I do hope you guys... Let me just... Uh, I could can continue reading here. But this, this is all about XRP and Ripple. And how these banks are looking for it and waiting for it to take over once clarity is given. And like I showed you guys before in terms of clarity, I'll show you again. Okay. In terms of clarity, I'll show you. Where is your name? Gary Gensler is right here on the steering committee for the financial stability report. Gary Gensler, not specifically him, but the SEC is also a team member on Ripple. At Ripple. There is also regulatory framework that Ripple had put out that states that the SEC and uh, a member of the CFTC will work inside Ripple, Ripple US at that point. And I believe at that point that will affect Canada as well because those two jurisdictions are pretty much like hand in hand. Uh, we'll have our own faction of it, but they'll be the ones that govern it essentially. We'll have governance, and governance over Canada in terms of bilateral agreement between Canada and the States, but the U.S. will be the one that oversees it, almost guaranteed. Kind of like the F F FAA, the Federal Aviation Authorities, and the CAA, CAA? Transport Canada, sorry. TC, Transport Canada. Got wrapped up with that. But yeah, don't be fooled. This is all a show. If you bought XRP, if you learn, uh, you know, grab some popcorn, sit back, DCA in, dollar cost average in. If you're learning to trade, that's even better because now you can work and implement an exit strategy for yourself because an exit strategy would be the way to go. You don't just want to buy XRP and wait for it to moon and then what, right? Eventually it'll come back down. To what level? Nobody knows. But while it's up there, you want to sell some at the top, take some profit. Allow yourself to take some profit. You've earned it. And that's what trading is about. And for those of you who want to learn how to trade, I'm not a tra I'm not a I I'm unable to teach. However, my mentor can totally cheat teach. Let me know if you guys want to know who he is and I'll send him send you his way and let him know to expect you guys as well. Because this man is making mad banks right now. He is making stacks of cash. He's good at what he does. He's been doing it for years. He's a self taught individual and then when he finally gained enough confidence he also got a a mentor and that mentor upped his level so much. Kinda of like myself with real estate. I'm a self-taught individual, and then when I connected with my mentor, brought my game up tenfold, and I, everything that I was doing before, enhanced quickly, 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 quickly. Life is short. Get what you can, get out of it what you can, and enjoy your life. Until the next time, guys, thank you guys for being here. Love y'all. Make it major moves. We going all in. Like we got nothing to lose. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves.